It's happy days when a budget mini shows up for review, especially when it's the new Intel N series CPUs. The GK3 Plus comes in at $160 US from Geek Buying for the Intel N95 model, which is the one we're checking out today. There's also an N100 version for an extra $20 US. Both CPUs are 4 cores, but the N95 has cut down graphics. Both come with 8GB of memory and 256 for storage. But before we continue, I know this is a budget mini review, but wouldn't it be cool to win the top of the line Intel NUC 13 Pro i7 unit? It sure would, and thanks to Simply NUC, you can win this mini, simply by entering using the competition link in the video description. US residents, 18 and up. The GK3 Plus is a plain looking plastic box with a thin blue LED light, which thankfully isn't annoyingly bright. Build quality is as expected for the budget end, the top lid flexes a bit, and the box creaks with pressure applied, but for $160, eh, whatever. The design of the Mini is weird. Now you've got ports on one side, on another, and another, and the LED. I don't see the benefit. Accessories included are a visor mount and screws, power adapter, HDMI cord, and there's a manual. One thing that sets this Mini PC apart from the others is a VGA port found on one side. I haven't used one for at least a decade, but if you need one for whatever reason, then here's a modern mini with it included. Cool. The side, I guess you'd call it, has the power button, dual USB 3 and a USB 2 port. The other side has an audio jack, gigabit LAN, dual HDMI 2 and another USB 2 port. The specs don't mention the speed of the USB 3 ports, but they're likely 5 gigabit. Adding a 2.5 inch storage drive is pretty simple. Remove the screw on the back and pull the lock to flip the lid. Add your storage drive on the tray here. Under the tray is the DDR4 memory slot with a 2666 MHz 8GB stick. To get to the storage drive, cooling and CMOS battery, you'll need to remove the rubber feet and use a very long thin screwdriver on all four of them. Mine wasn't long enough. That's what she said. But I can tell you it looks to be a Kim Tigo M.2 SATA SSD on the other side of the board. Another brand I haven't heard of. But the benchmarks show it to be fine for a budget OS drive. Actually, after a long search, I did manage to find a screwdriver that fit. And after 12 screws, that's what she said. Here it is. Don't say I never did anything for you. The Kim Tigo has Windows 11 Pro pre installed, but Ubuntu has no issues running straight off a USB stick. The Intel N series of chips have various power limits that can be set by the manufacturer or the user if the BIOS allows it. And by default, PL1 is set to 15 watts and PL2 is inactive. But we can push it further as you'll see in the benchmarks. So, how does she perform? Well, in single core, this N95 is on the slow side. It's faster than last year's flagship budget Pentium CPU by 6%. But it's 15% behind the Morphine M8 which uses the same CPU. All 30 watt labels mean these minis have had their power limit upped in the BIOS which only takes a couple of minutes to do and can be found in each review. Interestingly, upping the power limit didn't make any difference to a single core result for the GK3 Plus like it did for the other minis. In multi-core, the GK3 Plus is almost 4% ahead of the Pentium, but it's almost 11% behind the Morphine. So you can see a lower power limit holds back its full potential. With the power limit increased, it almost matches the B-Link Mini S12. There's a similar result in video encoding, although the margin widens to 17% slower than the Morphine M8. And it's a bit behind the B-Link Mini S12. We've previously seen that upping the power limit doesn't do much for the integrated graphics. Yet, it's interesting how each Mini behaves differently. The B-Link Mini S12 I reviewed was the underperformer here. While the GK3 Plus pretty much matched the Morphine M8 in DX11 and DX12 benchmarks. Oh, and that's with the memory clocking in at 2400 MHz in Windows. Memory bandwidth doesn't look to be an issue at all with the N95 chips. While these new budget minis can play more games than the previous generation, you're better off going for a 30 watt N100 if you want to do some light gaming. I don't recommend an esports title like Valorant on the N95, and it will run Spike worse down, on this be. box. Good attempt. Something like League of Legends plays fine though. Blood. 
With emulation, it's the same deal. I recommend just going with a higher powered N100. But here's a Vulkan and DirectX 12 comparison on the GK3 Plus using the PS2 emulator. If we go into the BIOS, we can up the limit to 30 watts for increased performance. Of course, it also increases CPU temperature and fan noise. To get into the BIOS, mash the delete key on startup. Use the keyboard to navigate to advanced and select power and performance. CPU, power management control, view configure turbo options and set PL1 and PL2 to 30,000 or 30 watts. Then save and exit. You can also restore defaults and save and exit if you don't like the added fan noise. Idle power draw was 10 watts, which is around the other N95s. Max power draw of 26 watts puts the GK3 Plus on the lower end of the scale. Upping the power limit adds a few watts to the max power draw. The cooling didn't have much trouble keeping CPU temps under control. 79C isn't amazing, but it's far from a problem. However, with the extra power, the cooling really struggles and we almost hit 100C. Pretty clear why they went for the lower power limit. The included SSD didn't have a temperature sensor, but SATA drives run cool, so I don't think there will be an issue with thermal throttling. Noise levels are also good. No issue here. But upping the power limit raises both idle and load noise level as it struggles with the extra wattage. Alright, let's summarize. At stock settings, temps are fine and it's quiet. The price is reasonable. The VGA port is a positive or negative depending on your needs. But performance is lower at stock than other higher price budget minis and upping the power limit adds fan noise and the cooling struggles. Also, single core performance is low either way. I'd just use this mini at stock settings. There's no USB-C and the Wi-Fi chip is pretty simple. So overall, the GK3 Plus is an okay box for the price and doesn't have any major issues. The budget mini PC segment sure is competitive with plenty of units around. I've got more to review and you can look forward to a top five roundup coming soon. In the meantime, why not check out the Morphine M8, which is a direct competitor to this box. Cheers.